So this lecture is a introduction to F2 um, about network design uh, decisions. And so through a series of videos, we will talk about formulating and solving optimization models for facility location and capacity allocation decisions. We'll talk about the demand allocation model, capacitated facility location model, and multi-echelon capacitated facility location model. And also, I hope you have a better understanding of which of these models are appropriate in which situations and why. Um, this is chapter five in our textbook. Um, and so as a reminder from supply chain network design, this requires you to ask a number of questions. For example, how many facilities, where should they be located? How should we use those facilities to then serve our markets? And how should we source our supplies? Um, and that's gonna be the focus of this class. Um, more broadly, we can think about facility roles um, and capacity, which is not really the focus um, of this lecture, but we can either modify um, some of the models we study in this class to incorporate those, or uh, these would be topics taught in other courses like um, facility design. So just to focus on uh, the facility um, location decisions and market and supply allocation decisions, those are the things we're going to create optimization models for. So we're going to determine where to locate facilities, and then if you sum up over all of those locations, you'll get how many facilities. And we'll also have allocation questions. And so if I have a facility, how should I allocate um, its resources to the demand? And if I have a facility, how should I source the supply coming in? And so from an optimization perspective, we need an objective function. We need to state what our goal is. And typically our goal is to maximize the overall profitability or minimize overall cost. And so oftentimes costs are transportation production costs and facility costs. Um, they can incorporate other things, um, but traditionally in kind of the basic uh, supply chain network design, they're typically those types of costs. And we want to do this, uh, but we are constrained. And typically the constraints that we have in these models is that we have to meet all the demand. Um, we only have so much capacity. We don't have infinite amounts of supply. We don't have infinite amounts of resources at these facilities. And so we have to uh, abide by those constraints. And oftentimes there's also some sort of um, customer requirement and that can be measured in different ways. And so in this lecture, um, beyond just this video, there'll be a number of videos, we'll talk about different optimization models that think through, through these. Um, but before we get into that, I think it's worth thinking about it broadly to think about what would influence network design decisions. So again, you can think about network design as where should I locate things? Um, how many should I have? And then once I have them, how should I allocate the resources that are at these locations? And there are many things to think about, and I wanna you know, warn you that this is a high level quick overview. Um, but if you remember to when we first started this class, we talked about the supply chain um, strategy should match your strategic strategy of your business. So if your business is to provide the lowest cost possible, you're gonna have a different network design uh, than if you want to be really customer focused and responsive. Um, a second idea is technological factor. So it, it depends what you are doing as a company. So the more complicated the product is to produce, usually the higher the fixed cost of the facility. So some um, examples in the capital region, uh, Global Foundries is producing chips. Those are really complicated. And so the idea that they would have that facility, they wouldn't have tons of them typically because they're really expensive. Regeneron in this area is another one. And so when you think about producing complicated things where they're actually growing cells, uh, you don't oftentimes have gazillion facilities because the fixed cost of complicated products lowers that. Um, another thing to think about is macro factors. And so the idea here is that, you know, you can think about, should I locate in the US? Should I locate in Mexico, in Canada? Should I locate in um, Europe, in Asia? Um, and there's lots of things to think about macro wise. And so, you know, there's economical, political infrastructure, there's things like taxes and tariffs and exchange rates, there's risks, um, et cetera, et cetera. And so these are really, really crucial things that people think about um, when they decide where to, to locate, especially globally, but you could also think about this more locally, um, state by state, um, which city to locate in, et cetera. And then there's the competitive factors. And so you have to think about you as a company, what is the influence of your competitors? And so 
but some industries, uh, you actually want to be close to your competitor. So have you ever thought about uh, where there are car dealerships? Usually all the different car dealerships are really close together. This is also true with furniture. So they're sometimes called furniture row. Um, and so one furniture store is close to another furniture store and they're direct competitors. That's kind of interesting, um, but the reason they do that is a lot of times these are types of purchases that people want to shop around. It's a relatively large purchase. And so if you're by yourself, then a customer only can see that um, your stuff. And they may have buyer's remorse if they don't check out everybody else. And so in some uh, businesses, you actually want to be close to your customers. And so that would influence where you locate your um, facilities. Others, you may want to be far from your um, customer or uh, competitors. So, you know, examples are if you're on a, someone's driving on the interstate and they need a hotel, oftentimes they just pick the one that's closest um, to the interstate that's there. Um, or other things like that. And so it depends on, again, the business strategy and what are you in, what business you're in, um, how this plays, plays in. Um, obviously, if, where your customers are located will influence where you should locate your facilities. Um, so if your strategy is you wanna be close to your customer, then you should obviously locate close to where your customers are and that will be influenced by your customer base. Um, and then logistics cost, okay? And so in lecture F1, we talked about transportation costs, inventory costs, facility costs, the combination of those. Um, and they really play a role specifically on how many facilities you have. And so if you have really high facility costs, you have fewer facilities, but then higher transportation costs, and there's all these trade-offs. Um, and so that really comes to bear at how many, but it also comes to bear when you think about how many if I only have one or two, they're gonna be in different locations potentially than if I have 100, right? And so these are just some, but I think it's, it's worth stepping back a little bit and thinking about many, many things that influence um, our network design decisions. And so when we think about uh, making these network design decisions, I wanna be really clear that there is a lot going on typically in this process um, from thinking about competitive strategy, thinking about um, internal constraints and global competition to macro things. Um, and that all kind of goes into figuring out um, some desirable sites. And so the idea here is um, the things we're going to talk about is we're going to assume we've done all of that stuff ahead of time and we've identified some potential locations um, that we would like um, to potentially build at, and then we want to use them as inputs to our optimization models to figure out where should we locate. And so the idea here is the potential, or sometimes called candidate locations, are things that are considered uh, feasible from a, a much larger perspective.